Hello and welcome to Cardiac Quick Check Assessment. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. So let's talk today about our cardiac quick check. We're looking for those red flags that indicate that our patient could be having some kind of cardiac illness. For example, shortness of breath. So that air hunger, not necessarily that the patient is having a high respiratory rate, but they're feeling that subjective dyspnea, which is often associated with having problems with gas exchange. Palpitations, indicating that the patient may be having a regular heartbeat or may be having tachycardia. Decreases in the peripheral perfusion, so something else that's very easy to be able to check at the bedside without having invasive monitoring or if we hear a new S3 heart sound or a new S4 heart sound. So let's talk about those heart sounds just for a moment because we listen to them all the time and sometimes it may be a little confusing as to what they mean. Not talking here about that patient that's had a murmur for 30 years or that patient who has known cardiac disease and has an S4. Okay, we're talking about a new sound. So this morning you listen to the heart sounds, you hear an S1, S2, lub dub, lub dub, nothing else. Just that nice S1 and S2. So if we look at the picture to the right there, we'll see that the sounds are the result of having the valves close after the action. So it's kind of like when you walk out of a room and you close the door, the sound of the door closing occurs after the event of walking out of the room. Same thing is true with a heart. The heart pumps and then the valve closes and you hear the sound. So it doesn't correlate with the pumping of the heart as such. The sound comes after. So when we're listening to the heart, what we're going to hear is the atria contract and the, the AV valves close. Then we have the ventricles contract and the aortic and the mitral valve close and we end up with our S2. So the sound occurs after the event of pumping the blood occurs. So then when we hear an S3, an S3 comes after S2. Well, that makes sense, right? S1, S2, S3. So it's coming after S2. So you hear something that sounds like lub-dub-da, lub-dub-da. You hear that kind of a pattern to it. That S3 sound is indicating that fluid is trying to rush back into the heart because we have fluid overload. So that's what we're hearing with an S3. Now this is a new S3. Again, I'm not talking about that patient who has a murmur forever. That's not new information. That's not going to help you. When you go in to assess your patient, you hear an S3, you know the patient's had an S3 for 30 years. It's not new information. doesn't really give you anything to tell you about what's happening with your patient right now. However, that new S3 can tell us that we have volume overload and we're hearing fluid trying to rush back into the heart and it's causing this turbulence in the heart with the blood and then it's kind of rattling the valve that makes that S3 sound. The other heart sound we want to listen for is a new S4. An S4 sound is usually rather soft and it occurs before S1. So what we're going to hear is we're going to hear something that sounds like to lub dub, to lub dub, to lub dub. Now if you ever learned about these sounds, you probably learned them in the manner of Kentucky and Tennessee or some other kind of mnemonic that we used for those. But what works best for me is to think about this in terms of what's actually happening. So with an S4, the pattern would sound like a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall, a stiff wall. That's what the pattern's going to sound like, and it tells you what's wrong. The problem is that the patient has a stiff wall of their heart, so the myocardium has been injured from a myocardial infarction or ischemia, and it's causing the wall to be stiff and not elastic. For the S3, what makes more sense to me is to talk about it in terms of sloshing in. So it has that pattern, sloshing in, sloshing in. And if we're talking about the S4, then it's a stiff wall, a stiff wall. You see the difference in the pattern in the way that the sounds are. So that's the pattern of those sounds that's going to make the difference between the S3 and the S4 and tell you what it is that's going on with your patient. Hemodynamically then, we can assess a number of different things with our 
cardiac patient. Now, when we talk about hemodynamics, you may think in terms of the ICU. So this is the kind of stuff they do in the ICU, right? They look at preload, cardiac output, afterload. You're looking at this all the time when you're assessing your patients. So you're looking at INO and weight. That tells you about the to patient's total fluid volume status, their preload. You're looking at their cardiac output by assessing their systolic blood pressure, and you're looking at their afterload by looking at the diastolic blood pressure. So when you take these things apart and you start looking at these values and putting them in hemodynamic terms, it makes a lot more sense what you're seeing in your cardiac patient. So the patient's systolic starts going up. Maybe at the same time as the diastolic, it's indicating an increase in cardiac output. Now, initially, that cardiac patient is going to have an increase in cardiac output because they're trying to compensate for the fact that maybe there's not enough oxygen in the myocardium. We can also look at the EKG and look for three main things here, T-wave inversion, ST-segment elevation, and Q-waves. These mean different things. The T-wave inversion gives you an indication of ischemia, ST segment elevation tells you that there's beginning to be injury that's occurring to the heart. Now keep in mind that with injury anywhere in the body, oftentimes those can recover if we're able to revascularize that area fairly quickly. Once we see Q waves, and in this EKG here you see some Q waves, however these Q waves are not deep and wide. Therefore, they're not pathological Q waves. But a Q wave is that first downward deflection of the QRS complex, and that indicates that we have necrosis. We have dead tissue that has occurred in the heart. We can't tell how long ago that happened. We don't know if it happened five minutes ago or three to four days a week ago, two weeks a month. We don't know because Q waves indicate necrosis, and necrosis is going to persist. So, reviewing our red flags, look for shortness of breath, that air hunger that the patient is trying to get more oxygen to the heart. Palpitations, indicating the heart is trying to compensate, maybe by dysrhythmias or by a tachycardia. A decrease in peripheral perfusion, indicating our cardiac output is starting to decrease, and those new S3 or S4 heart sounds. Thank you for joining me today for Cardiac Quick Check Assessment. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.